I've used the iPhone 14 Pro for over a month now and I have a serious love-hate relationship with this device. Hi, I'm Aishad, you're watching Track in Tech English. Indulge me as I share my frustration and adulation for the iPhone 14 Pro in this video. Let's start off with the design. The iPhone 14 Pro and the 14 Pro Max carry forward a similar design language as its predecessors, the iPhone 13 Pro and the 13 Pro Max. That's not it. The camera bump protrudes quite a bit from the rear now and therefore when you place it on a table, there's quite a bit of table wobble out here. Also, if you do add a case to the phone, most of which will end up making your phone much heavier. And for a small phone like the iPhone 14 Pro, the weight is a bit too much. Well, that's the price I suppose you have to pay for cramming in all that technology inside a tiny little form factor. Obviously, this year we do not have a Type-C port, but future iPhones will come with a Type-C port. That's been confirmed, so I'm really excited for that. But yeah, this is a Lightning port with USB 2.0 speeds. All said and done, the iPhones, as they always are, are very, well built and almost feel like a jewelry in your hand. Obviously, the most marketed feature of the iPhone 14 Pro is that new dynamic eyelid. What Apple has essentially done is they've removed the notch and replaced it with a pill-shaped cutout and added some functionalities on top of it so that it doesn't feel distracting. But I will tell you this, when you're using the phone in landscape mode, mostly for watching movies or playing games, that pill-shaped cutout is definitely a distraction, even more so than the notch itself. Some of the added functionalities to the Dynamic Island are particularly nice. I do like the live activities feature that enables a lot of functionalities. For example, if you are listening to a song on Apple Music, you can change it directly from the Dynamic Island itself while you scroll through your Twitter feed. And that annoying low battery pop-up that would happen whenever your battery life hit 20% and you know interrupt whatever you were doing, that has been now moved to the dynamic island, making it far less intrusive now. And then there are apps like Flighty and Lookup, which make use of iOS's Live Activities API to actually make it useful for you to track certain information in real time. You know, there's a live activity that you guys can try as well. If you hit that subscribe button, the color will change. Try it out. It's pretty cool. We'd love your support. And also, I mean, if you like the video, hit the like button. Maybe even comment below for the sake of the YouTube algorithm because the algorithm will recommend this video to more people wanting 14 Pro reviews. All that said, after having used it for a month, the dynamic island just blends into the background and you keep noticing it less and less. But just like the name suggests, this island is a destination that you will probably enjoy for a couple of days, a week at max, after which you will definitely get bored of it. But that display, the display on the iPhone 14 Pro is, oh my God, it's absolutely mad. And you know what? We might be overlooking the fact that this is probably the biggest upgrade on the Pro series this year. The kind of peak brightness that it can achieve when you're outdoors of 1000 nits and the peak brightness that it can achieve in, you know, specific points when you're watching an HDR video of up to 2000 nits, it's just absolutely bonkers. It's so bright that if I show it on camera right now, it will be overexposed and I'll have to reduce the brightness. In fact, I noticed that even while you're scrolling through Instagram Reels, certain videos where there are bright spots and probably uploaded in HDR look very, very good. And it goes without saying that you do get Dolby Vision support on the display itself and the color accuracy is absolutely spot on. This is not just an A plus display or an A plus plus display, this is an A plus 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 display. Over and above that, you also get an LTPO panel, which means that the refresh rate can go as low as one hertz, which is tech that Apple has of course imported from the Apple Watch which enables Apple to now have always on possible on the 14 Pro and the 14 Pro Max. But unlike most Android phones where the always on display is mostly black, this one is just a dim version of the basic lock screen. Quite a few find this distracting, but I'm not someone who has used always on often. So for me, this doesn't really matter. And if it matters to you, you can switch to a darker wallpaper and in effect also increasing the battery life in process. In any case, I did switch off the always on display on the iPhone 14 Pro while I was using it. And I also switched off the keyboard haptics primarily because it does affect the battery life by quite a bit. In fact, this is the right time for me to tell you about the battery life on the iPhone 14 Pro. Essentially, with always on display on and with keyboard haptics on, I would get about five and a half hours of screen on time on the regular with, you know, my kind of moderate to heavy usage. But with both of these features off, 
the battery life would improve and you know jump up to seven hours of screen on time which is good enough for the iphone 14 pro that said the iphone 13 pro and 13 pro max do offer better battery life compared to the newer phones so inside the pro series you've got the new a16 bionic chip which is based on tsmc's four nanometer fabrication process and it is definitely more powerful and power efficient compared to the a15 bionic but the difference is not so much that you will see it in daily performance so regular users can't really tell the difference however if you're a gamer let me tell you a real life situation that i used to face when i played on the iphone 13 pro max i played about 20 minutes of apex legends on the regular and after about 20 minutes the screen would dim on its own just to ensure that you know the phone doesn't get too hot or you know the game doesn't throttle so the screen really doesn't dim after 20 minutes of apex legends even on the smaller 14 Pro. The chip is far more stable now for longer gaming sessions. It is further evident from the 3 Mark Wildlife stress test comparison that you can see on your screen right now that uh, the 14 Pro offered better stability compared to you know the 13 Pro and it also had the better loop score as well. Having said that, if you take a look at the you know battery life stats, you'll notice that the 13 Pro lost less battery compared to the 14 Pro. Again, confirming our real life usage experience as well. For many folks, the biggest upgrade and the reason to consider the Pro over the vanilla iPhone 14 would be, you know, the upgraded cameras for sure. So the primary camera is a 48 megapixel Sony sensor now, which can shoot 12 megapixel pixel bent samples. And it can also shoot 48 MP Pro RAW directly from the camera itself. Now this camera is very capable, especially when it comes to sharpness and color accuracy. The skin tones are particularly fantastic and this is true even for the fantastic selfie camera. But the major problem lies with the HDR and night mode algorithms. So when you're shooting pictures of scenes with high dynamic range with extremely bright areas, they're mostly blown out. And in the night, Apple crushes the shadows terribly just like your girl would crush your aspirations. <laughs> bad jokes i tell you ultra wide is fantastic too with a very wide field of view and the capability to shoot macro shots thanks to autofocus capabilities telephoto is still the same 3x magnification but low light has improved and the overall quality as well plus you can shoot 2x nearly optical zoom level pictures thanks to the crop of the main sensor that is possible now now these 2x shots do look good as well but when it comes to overall zoom performance i would prefer either the pixel 7 pro or the samsung galaxy s22 ultra but if you're looking at the best phone for videography you cannot go wrong with the iphone you can shoot 4k 60 fps videos in dolby vision no less using all the cameras in the stack including the front one that's not it the cinematic mode is capable of shooting 4k 30 fps videos now and the new action mode at 2.8k 60 fps offers gimbal like smooth stabilization too the videography chops on this phone are excellent like i mentioned over and above that, if you use, uh, you know, the iPhone's cameras on apps like Instagram and WhatsApp, where you will send pictures or upload videos, you get direct API access to the camera itself. So the quality of the pictures that you get are just so much better than what you can get with competing Android flagships. Only if the algorithm didn't have the problem of overblown highlights or crushed shadows. Talking about problems, iOS 16, including 16.1, has been slightly buggy on this phone. I face that copy paste issue and that torch icon issue quite often. Now, while this isn't a problem particularly for, you know, the iPhone 14 Pro, because it did come with iOS 16, but iOS 16 has also nerfed the battery life on many older iPhones is what I've seen, you know, a lot of people reporting. That said, overall the iOS 16 experience on the iPhone 14 Pro has been really good. Primarily because I do like that cool uh, new lock screen widgets that you do get. Plus, of course, the wallpaper settings that you have, the depth mapping that it can do, all of those are really good. That said, there are a ton of cool new features in iOS 16. I particularly like the one where you can just pick up a subject from the picture itself, from the foreground, and paste it in any app that you like. Now, coming to the network performance on the iPhone 14 Pro, it's been fantastic on 4G for me. I've been using, you know, Airtel 4G in Pune, and compared to the Pixel 7 Pro, I got far better data speeds and, you know, far better stability as well. Although for some odd reason, 5G support hasn't been enabled for iPhones yet in India and, you know, telcos are working with Apple directly to enable it soon. So we'll have to wait and watch when that happens. So like I mentioned, I've had a love-hate relationship with the iPhone 14 Pro. There are times when I would take a picture and it'd be fantastic and there are times when I would take a picture and it'd be terrible. And of course, stuff like the performance on the phone is really good, but then iOS is sometimes messy. And using the iPhone 14 Pro for a month made me realize that the hype and excitement that I had for this phone 
died far earlier than it did on you know previous iPhones. I can't really pinpoint why because I still think that the iPhone 13 Pro is a great phone and a great buy for a lot of folks who don't want to spend a lot of money because it's almost as good as the iPhone 14 Pro. That said, if you are on an iPhone 12 Pro or earlier, the 14 Pro will feel like a substantial upgrade. So that was my one month review of the iPhone 14 Pro. Are there iPhone 14 Pro users? What has your experience been like? Is it similar? Let me know in the comment section below. Until next time, this is Ashad signing off. Keep tracking and stay safe.